heart attack, fast fatal heart impact, past painful scars, in fact, I blast tasteful bars and pass, I back up my actions, fact, don't ask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class, as they hear me snap, I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise, now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce, I ain't lost, I'm finally loose, pick a new so for excuse, I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used, everybody wants a piece now, y'all can rest in peace now, you're dead to me, so peace out, remember you're discreet now, get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Q Show here. And now, whenever we last left off, a few things happened with Deku. In the last part, Deku's house was broken into. All for one impersonated Hawks, trying to plan to attack Deku after dinner, whenever he went to bed. However, Deku quickly saw through this, because his father is not a family man. He prioritizes his job over his family. Now, that did surprise all for one. And there was a bit of a skirmish where he tried to use Deku's sisters as leverage to get Mirako and Deku to not fight back. However, after capturing Mirako, all for one, he was trying to get Deku where Deku's friend swooped in. Thanks to Deku notifying them prior to sitting down to dinner that they need to get over here in case anything does happen. Now, because of this, they were able to save Deku's sisters. And Mirako, she was still kidnapped since she couldn't get away from All for One. Now, Deku was acting irrational after the events happened, having to knock out his sisters and take them to a hero association building. Todoroki then burning down Deku's house with her quirk, because she knows that Deku's sisters would always try to come back here if it was still left standing. Now, that was a lot to cover. Anyways, with that being said, we do actually cut up to about a month later. Now, a few things have happened in this time frame. In this time frame, Deku, he has been healing thanks to a member of the Meta Liberation Army who was a doctor using their quirk on Deku. The quirk causes cellular regeneration, and whenever you do use it on a person, their cells will start to regenerate faster and at least close wounds easier. Meaning that if it does come into contact with an initial point of injury or freshly injured wounds, it will seal and close them. However, it cannot completely heal. It'll take about a fourth to a fifth of the healing process away and cause it to do that in an instant. However, it is not that much of an advanced quirk, but it's still very useful to have on hand. Now, Deku at this point a month later is almost completely healed. However, there's a lot of things that have been happening. Redestro is trying to question Deku's loyalty. Since Deku, yeah... He was very surprised to hear this boy's father was a part of the Metal Liberation Army and he knew about it. This was very interesting to him. He did try to drop hints. However, he doesn't believe he correctly or even did say that, did he? There's too much going on here. Deku's house was attacked by a villain. The same villain he believes to have tried to break into UA. Along with that, it's been revealed around this time, the conspiracy theory. The students that went missing that night are involved with them. Now, that was the thing that was very tricky. They don't know what to do. And we actually do currently pick up with Deku in the city where the MLA does reside in. Where the entire city is their members. Now. Deku, he was very alarmed by this, and it was very strange. They can try to live out their lives here as much as they want to and try to at least retain some normalcy. However, at the end of the day, they can't. People or strangers or visitors can come here and see him. And if that does happen, police could be called and a whole lot of stuff can happen. So that's just a problem. What can they do? 
UA, they've already at least publicly announced that the students will be living on campus. As to prevent these home attacks from villains, along with that, they've even canceled the internships. UA believes that these students may have died. And then there actually is a case of Momoya Yorozu. Deku, he has not tried to contact her since she's probably under strict surveillance. However, he has tried contacting somebody else. And that has been tricky. Now, Deku, he is currently sitting in his hospital bed. As he's dialing a phone number and then going to actually call it. Pick up, you tiny bastard. Now, we do cut over to somewhere else, where the phone is ringing and the person doing setups does actually go to stop, as they do bring up their hand and go to grab the phone that is across the room, before bringing it back over to their head. Hello? Hmm? Hello? Who is this? Uh, it, this is Izuku Takami, right? Yeah, who are you? It's me, Mineta. Hmm? Really? Your voice sounds different. Really, it does? The person going to bring their hand up to their throat. Oh. oh, well, maybe it does. What is it? I'm kind of busy training. Oh, so you took my words to heart. Yeah, I did. What's up? Listen, there's a bit of a problem. Hmm? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've been trying to contact you, but you haven't been listening or even trying to pick up the phone. Yes, yeah, sorry. The villains think I still might have a loyalty for UA. Or, well, even certain things. I did, however, at least try to do my best to show I'm loyal to them. Have you now? So I have a question. How did it all for one, know my home address. Hmm? What? No, I don't, I don't know anything about that, Takami, okay? Hmm? Really? Yeah, I mean, your parents are pro-heroes, are pro heroes, or... Well, something, right? Yeah, they are. So, it might be public records? I don't know. I mean, there is a doctor here. Hmm? You guys have a doctor? Yeah, we do, actually. I mean, I've talked to him a few times, and he's helped me out with a few things, but other than that, that's really all I know. Hmm? So, would you happen to know what happened to my mother and father? Hmm? Your mother and father? No, not really. I see. I mean, I've met your dad. You have. Yeah, I, I have. He seems pretty cool. Hmm. Okay. Well, now. What happened to him? Hmm? Oh, uh, I don't really know. I haven't seen him in a while. Manana? Hmm? What's up? Do you still... Are you still on our side? Hmm? What do you mean? Of course I am. Okay, well, what city are you guys currently in? Now, Mineta does say Degawa City, and Deku, he does ask for their current location. Hmm? Uh, I really don't know. Hmm? Is that a fact? Yeah, I really don't. We use portals for everything, so we don't really go outside. In fact, I kind of haven't really left this building in the last two weeks. Anyways, we do just use traveling by portal anyways. I think the doors might be locked. You could come through them, but you'd have to use keys. I see. So they're surveillancing you too. Yeah, I mean, I could say I can, I, I'm trying to go outside, but even then, I'm sort of being watched. You know, being a former UA student and all. Okay. Well, do whatever you can. Try to convince them to let you out. Now, Deku does say a location of a place in Degawa City, telling Mineta to meet him there. Now, 
Deku is going to stand up. As he does, get out of his hospital bed and go to change into some clothes that he does have laid out. The doctors, they're keeping him here in this room. He is technically not a patient. However, the ward he's hidden in, it could be technically classified as the same type of Todoro that Todoroki's mother does use, or she's lived in. Now, Deku, he's going by a fake name here, and a fake identity. And Deku, he does have a few ideas as to what he could do to hide his appearance in Degaba City. Now, we do actually have Todoroki, where Deku, he does go to knock on her door, and just open up. Izuku, hey, what's up? I just got through to Mineta. He finally answered the phone? Yeah, he did. I don't really know what's up with him, but I need to confirm a few things. Find out if he's on our side. I understand. And I would rather have you there with me. Oh, okay, um, are you doing okay? I'm managing. The stress has gotten a bit to me, though, and it might have affected my feathers. Hmm? So, what does that mean, really? Well, it means that I can still fly. However, I'm working with a bit few feathers than I really should be able to. It's... Similar to, what is it? Turning off my quirk. Or my feathers. Huh? Yeah. <sighs> because of my stress, my body's releasing hormones in a weird way. And those hormones, they can be hurtful or poisonous to my feathers. It's similar to a bird's, but it's not exactly the same. I don't go pulling out my feathers like they do. Oh. Oh, I, I kind of understand it. Do you? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, good. <sighs> so, I was wondering if you wanted to go with me. Yeah, sure. Now, Deku and Todoroki, they do leave somewhere. Heading to a clothes shop and buying some disguises. Now. Deku, he does buy... Let's just see. Hmm. He does buy a very large scarf. And he does also buy a hat. And even a black wig. Deku doing what he can with the wig, trying to put it on. Cutting holes open for his ears to slide through. And then using the scarf to wrap around his head and neck. As he's able to hide his ears a lot easier. Now, Deku, after doing so, he does also disconnect his wings. The idea that he's walking around with a giant white pair of wings on his back would be a dead giveaway as to who he is. Everybody knows him. He's on TV. And that's just the problem. If they are to meet Mineta, Deku can take some feathers. However, he'd have to use the train to get there, Otherwise, more things could become a problem. And that's exactly what Deku does do. Him and Todoroki, the, well, morning, heading by train to Degawa City. And eventually arriving. Now, as they're currently heading to go meet with Mineta, we do actually have over back at UA. The internships were cancelled, and students are living in dorms now. And the teachers, they actually have somewhat been curious about Momoya Yorozu and her possible involvement with the MLA. Now, Momo, she hasn't been involved with them for too long. So, looking back on everything and trying to find out where she may have been, who she knows, along with even certain people, it's very interesting to them. She went to the same middle school as Deku and Todoroki. And sometime last year, Deku, he met Dan Ki from what she does know. And then Jiro, they met during the entrance of the exams. And that's really all she can tell them. Now, UA can somewhat verify this information, but they can't really at all. 
They've talked to the school districts. They've talked. They've talked to certain people, and it's just very strange and insane to them. Now, Momo, she's been somewhat cleared from this, but she is at least at light under light surveillance since she does live in the UA dorms. Everybody is under light surveillance there, really. Now, we do actually have where she's sitting down in the living room and watching the news. As somebody they do sit there at the other end or other side of the table on, by the couch. And that person is currently just tapping their finger on the table. Now, this is quite interesting. As Momo, she actually does turn her head and look to see Ida. Hmm? Why is he doing that? Now, Momo, she does just pay attention to the tapping of his finger. And she's kind of confused. Hmm. Wait a minute. It's not a song pattern. It's not anything like that. Hmm. Is it a rhythm? No. Momo, she finally does just have a few things click in her head. As she does think Morse code. Her going to pull out her phone and look it up on the internet. As she just pay attention to what Ida, he's currently doing with his finger tapping. Now, Momo, she's kind of confused. For a minute, she thought these tappings, they meant nothing. However, after trying to write a few things down, she can see that he's kind of annoyed at something. Now, she does just get one single thing Ida, he had been tapping. As she does write down the name Stain. Now, this is actually where Momo she has to look at Ida. And you know, he finally does this go to look towards her. Um, Ida, are you okay? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to piece everything together and keep my calm. Oh, uh, but her going to think writing down a note and passing it over to him as she does rip it off of the notepad she created. Here. Now, Ida, he does look at the paper that she just did hand him. You're, well, frustrated. Are you alright? Hmm. I... <sighs> now, she does continue to write things and rip them off of the notepad handing it over to Ida. You seem annoyed about Stain. Is this about your brother? Is this about the hero killer? Yes. Now, she has to ask Ida a few things. As the questions they do go on, and eventually Ida, he does ask if she would like to go off campus with him to talk. Hmm? Sure, I'd, I'd love to. I know a really good restaurant we can head to. Ah, uh, thank you, M Momo. Don't worry about it. Besides, we're friends, right? Now, we do actually currently have later at the restaurant that Deku took Momo to. Now, the two do sit down and Momo does start to ask it of multiple questions. One of which is if he's still dealing with things about his brother and Stain. Yes. That has been on my mind a lot. Really? Yes, it has. In fact, I can't really think of anything else about it. I'm just... heartbroken. My brother, he loves being a pro hero. And that was taken away from him just because he was doing his job. It's hard to wrap your mind around. I just want to get him back. Hmm? Get who back? Well, I mean, you want to get your brother back? Not really. I was talking about Stain. Uh, oh. Really? Yes. I... I was thinking about trying to track him down. And get him back. 
You're talking about killing a man, Ida. I know, but it would give me some peace of mind. I haven't been able to sleep. I've had nightmares recently about it. And I don't know. But if you kill this guy, you you can't be a pro hero. I I am I'm well aware of that. Hmm? I'll willingly turn myself in after that. What? Yes. I'll turn myself in. It was because of stain in his quirk. If he just... If my brother didn't... I don't know. He probably wouldn't have gotten involved. Had there been more people around. Now... Momo, she immediately does see what this could do. Um, Ida, I'm looking up at her. What if I told you what UA has said about me is true? Hmm? What? What if I told you I really was a part of the Meta Deliberation Army? Momo, we can't talk about that here. Um, actually... Her would actually bring up her hand and put it up to her forehead. As Ida, he does look around and see everybody start to do the same thing as they all do look in her direction. What is this? This place is actually run by the Meta Liberation Army. Wait, so I have to... No, Ida, don't. Hmm? Her would actually reach her hand out and grab him by his wrist to try to walk by. Listen. We can help you get back at Stain. You can? Yes. We're everywhere. We know things. Things heroes don't. Along with that, well, we're all just normal people. The society we want to build allows us to be able to use their quirks if they want to or not. It's better for people. It would have been better for your brother to have more people around, right? Besides, he probably would have been stronger if society didn't force him to train as quirk the way he did. He had to wait. Some people don't. And that's what we want to achieve. I just... It's all just... So... What if I told you I can help you get revenge? I... I would say yes. Perfect. I need to talk to some people and try to call them. Now, my mom, she is going to create a phone. I just dial a phone number and they're going to call Deku and Momo, oh, Deku and Todoroki. Now, these two are actually waiting for Mineta to show up. And Deku's phone does start to ring. As he's going to oh, pull it out of his pocket and answer, Hello? Hmm? Uh, hello? Wait a minute, Ida? Is that really you? Uh, guys, I think we found another member. Now, this is all quite confusing. As Deku, he does tell Momo that they can't talk right now. Hmm? Really? Yeah, we can't. Right now we're getting information and intel. After that, we'll call you guys back. Now, as that said, Deku does go close the phone. As Momo, she does go to actually snap this phone in half and go to drop it in a cup of soda. Now, we do actually have where Deku, him, and Todoroki are both standing there waiting. As they're both looking around for Mineta. Until some way they do go to actually tap somebody on the shoulder. And Deku does turn to see somebody at his height. Hmm? Uh, hello? A long time, no see. Wait, what the fuck? Mineta? Yeah. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.